Hello, thanks for tuning in today. Today I would like to share with you some information that I would find, uh, would, that I was thinking you would find useful to travel to North Cyprus. Um, this would be including general information about the island of Cyprus and about getting around and also touristic information and information on food would, would be awaiting you when you are there. My father is from Cyprus, so I have family roots there. I still have relatives on Cyprus and I regularly travel there. That would be every two to three years on average. Covid put a bit of a stop on it, but uh, we just recently visited, so I found more inspiration on what to share with you. So regarding the general info, North Cyprus um, or Cyprus, the island of, uh, itself, sits in the east of the Mediterranean Sea and it's the most east island in the Mediterranean Sea and it technically counts to the Middle East. It is to be found south of uh, Turkey, west of Syria, approximately 200 kilometers direct line and also west of uh, Lebanon. And if you go south from Cyprus, you reach Egypt, just to give you an approximate geographic location. And according to Greek mythology, Cyprus is the birthplace of Aphrodite or Venus, depending on which language you would like to draw it from. And Cyprus is a divided island, so this is why I'm focusing on North Cyprus, because I have more knowledge on North Cyprus than South Cyprus. Cyprus as itself is a very visit-worthy place, so I can definitely recommend going there. And the northern part is technically also belonging to the EU and it's special territory to what I could find online after researching. Because of the division there is a buffer zone between North and South Cyprus and the Blue Helmets are stationed there. Just to really make sure that no escalation is taking place. And in that buffer zone, the time stands still, so if there is a chance for you to visit it, you might find some retro things around. Good to, for you to know, especially visiting the north, there are several military bases on Cyprus and northern Cyprus, because Turkey holds um, some bases there, military bases, you will find a lot of Turkish uh, military there. And the British also have military bases there and actually also the Russians are allowed to use the military facilities. So that had to do with the war in Syria to, to what I could find. And so apparently also um, Russian military uses the facilities there. Also what I can say is if you go to North Cyprus there's no direct entry to North Cyprus other than going through Turkey or through the south of Cyprus. The border used to be closed, but a couple of years ago the border was open, so technically you can travel to Larnaca or Paphos, for example, to the airports, and then cross the border to be in North Cyprus. If you do, then uh, please be aware that the, the car rental companies won't let you pass the border with their rental cars because of insurance issues. In the north part of Cyprus we have Erjan Airport which is reachable through airports from Turkey, uh, Istanbul or Antalya would be classic airports to, to travel to northern Cyprus but probably also other Turkish airports offer services to Erjan Airport. And in the south, uh, as just mentioned earlier, there's Lanaka Airport, more in the towards the east of the um, island and Paphos is more in the west of Cyprus. Because of its history, people drive on the left side of the road. Cyprus used to be a British colony. And uh, to cross the border, there are several crossing points uh, along the border of Cyprus. And uh, for example, there's also for pedestrians, there is a pedestrian area in Nicosia where you can pass and uh, yeah, because there's a, like a big shopping area and um, yeah, there's just not for cars to be passed. But um, yeah, by car definitely it's also possible. The currency in the south of Cyprus is the Euro, because the Republic of Cyprus belongs to the EU. And in the north it would be Turkish Lira, as the, um, Turkey is supporting the northern part um, in its current setup. And to my knowledge, major transactions are um, being done actually in pound, British pound sterling. And uh, 
this has always been the case and um, still till today um, so the, the British colony left its mark. In the northern part of Cyprus the official language is Turkish as Turkey has more uh, influence on that part of the island and in the south of Cyprus the official language is Greek but still English is quite okay to get around. And as well um, for both languages Turkish and the Greek language on Cyprus they both are known to have their own dialect when speaking so um, I heard from people from Turkey that the Turkish dialect is quite distinct and um, that accounts also for the Greek Cypriots on getting around. On Cyprus there are no trains, there are bus services, little buses that collect people or there are bus stations that you can use so there are, there are bus services and I heard that they are not quite reliable. I have to say that I've never used a bus service on Cyprus as we've always been driven around or been driving around ourselves in cars or rental cars so I cannot give you any advice on the bus services there. When you go to a Cypriot's house they say Hosh Geldinis which is the welcoming greeting and then you can say Hosh Bulduk which is the answer to the welcoming sentence. Naturally when you are a bit more closer to the people and you get to know them you get a kiss on the left and the right cheek and if you're meeting an older person they will also kind of guide you a bit and they, so you, you should be kissing their hand and then put their hand to your forehead. You will see quite a few stray dogs and cats on Cyprus. It used to be quite a lot in the past and I think nowadays from what I could tell the stray animals get more support. They are being fed. I, when you walk through through the city, you see sometimes bolts with food on stairs or in the corners. And I also saw a sign about TNR, which is trap neuter release. So I think that's a good development in the past years. The beaches on Cyprus. You have uh, several kinds of beaches. There are many nice sandy beaches. Many belong to hotels, but there are also public beaches. And you have to look for them. Uh, there are definitely some around. Uh, when you go to a public beach, you might not see very clean beach sometimes. I was on two public beaches when I went to Cyprus. And one of uh, both was... Yeah, there were quite a few cigarette butts and it could have been definitely cleaner. There are facilities for changing etc and showering off the salty water but definitely it's not as clean as it probably is when, when you're on a beach of, that belongs to a hotel. You can also go to a hotel beach, probably they will charge you some amount of money to use their beach, though here I, c I couldn't uh, tell you what, what the usual amounts would be. Beside the sandy beaches there are also stony beaches where it might not be super pleasant to enter the sea, but uh, definitely the sea is reachable in many places on Cyprus. The water temperature on Cyprus is differing. In February it's the coldest. There you have 17 degrees Celsius. And in the summer, in August, it's the Mediterranean is the, the warmest, so there you have 27 degrees. And uh, I went in May, for example, there the the temperature of the Mediterranean Sea was 21 degrees, so still kind of cold. And so if you want to bathe in a warmer sea, rather choose late summer or early fall. Otherwise there are uh, many historic buildings to see and visit ruins from Roman times and medieval times and uh, I definitely can recommend it. The, the typical uh, material of which the buildings are uh, made is sandstone. And if you have the chance to stay in one of those buildings, I can really recommend it because the climate inside such a building is so much nicer than a con concrete building. Last time I stayed in an old building uh, which was made of sandstone and here also I found it was really nice climate in the building itself. Otherwise there are uh, several resorts on Cyprus, bigger, bigger resorts where you can check in. And I found also many small boutique hotels in Karenia, that is Gierne, on the shore of uh, northern Cyprus. And it, it's a very nice, nice thing to do when you have the chance to check into a boutique hotel, I think. 
otherwise just a side note if you're a bit more conscious about the plastic use uh, on Cyprus it's quite common still that when you go grocery shopping that you get free plastic bags so if you have the chance I recommend you, you bring your own bag to use or reuse and also what really struck me is when you order soft drinks not just cocktails for example soft drinks juices you always get a plastic straw so I really recommend you specifically order your drink without a straw to just avoid the usage of so many plastic straws. For the families there are playgrounds uh, on Cyprus and Northern Cyprus. I've seen many being built in the past years especially after the EU made it possible to create more infrastructure in Northern Cyprus. New roads were built and also new playgrounds were built. However, um, at least if I compare it to the German standards where they really check on the safety of the things that the children can use for play, it's not quite the same. So I saw a thing where children could climb on but the ropes would be torn for example or it would be a bit shaky when the children would be climbing on it. So yeah, there are playgrounds but uh, just use it with caution or really observe your child when when it's using such playgrounds. Otherwise for the food, since Cyprus sits in the Mediterranean Sea, the classic um, cuisine that you find there is Mediterranean food and it's very similar to other Mediterranean countries, at least from the region. I tried foods from the region of Lebanon and Turkey, Palestine, all this area. Also, yeah, I guess Egyptian food might be quite similar as well to some extent. So this is the, the classic cuisine that you find there. However, there's also British influence. So you, you easily can get a British type of breakfast on Cyprus. However, the breakfasts themselves, they're quite distinct, I would say. So the classic Cypriot breakfast contains a few pieces of cheese, um, that would be goat or sh sheep cheese. And then there would be some olives, green and black olives are very popular on Cyprus. You also would get slices of toast. And uh, if you request it, you would get an omelette or a fried egg or boiled egg. And a few slices, for example, also of tomato and cucumber. And also mm, some sort of corned beef sausage uh, would be offered. I am myself a, a vegetarian, so I skipped that part of the breakfast. But uh, yeah, this is what would be awaiting you if you're in a smaller place and they offer breakfast to you. So lunch would be also served as warm food. For example, rice is called pilaf there. And when you order a salad, it, it might not be the classic salad that you would be expecting. So the greens would be chopped. So usually it would be lettuce, tomato, cucumber. And then the classic way of actually making the, the salad ready to eat would be putting lemon juice on it and uh, putting a bit of oil and salt and that's it. So no classic salad dressing, Thousand Island or whatnot. You would get, I guess you could get it, but um, that's not the classic way it's being done on Cyprus. You can also get a lot of nice fresh fish on Cyprus, but when you order there, pay attention that, that it might not be the locally freshly caught fish. I also saw salmon on the menu and in a fish restaurant on Cyprus because I guess they, they wanted to include it for the sake of um, completeness. But salmon is definitely not one of the local fish there. And also better known would be the Turkish coffee. Um, there are three ways to order it. There is Turkish coffee without any sugar, that would be sade. Then you have Turkish coffee with a bit of sugar and that would be orta. And then there is shekerli, which is really sweet Turkish coffee. And the way it's being done, um, the coffee will be actually boiled. Like there's really finely ground coffee beans and there's a tiny pot where it would be boiled and then put into those tiny cups that uh, you probably know. The classic brand that my family likes to drink is John Coffee. So when I thought John is J-O-H-N, actually it's not the way it's spelled, it's uh, spelled C-O-N. Another thing that I wanted to explain is the bigger bins and some toilets that you might see. This stems from the history that Cyprus didn't have a central pipe system for fresh and clean water. And to ease the management of the wastewater, people are disposing of their used toilet paper in those bins. So if you see them, please try and remember to use those bins too. 
dispose of your toilet paper. Yeah, and that's about it. I hope you found this information useful and see you soon. Bye-bye.